Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Two, are two minutes early. Um, I just want to say thank you for being here today. Um, we know there has been a lot of anticipation surrounding the Tyree Nichols investigation. Um, as you know, on January 7th, on January 7th, there was an encounter between 29-year-old Tyree Nichols and former MPD officers. Immediately upon learning about this, um, DA Mulroy, Shelby County District Attorney DA Mulroy, um, enlisted the assistance of the TBI to determine if um, excessive force had been used. And since then, the DA's office has worked with TBI and we will continue so, to do so. Today, you will hear from DA Mulroy with director of TBI. And, and, so, and so I want to just make it very clear and ask for your understanding that this is still an ongoing investigation. And so for that reason, there are limits to some of the things and some of the questions that we can answer. So we ask for your understanding as it relates to that. And um, I will turn it over to DA Mulroy. Um, and did I mention that we will take questions after, but they will, we, we have a really limited amount of time. So thank you. Thank you, Erica. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm joined today, as Ms. Williams has already said, with the director of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, David Rausch, as well as assistant director, Josh Melton. I'm also joined with, uh, by other members of my staff, um, including Ernest Brooks, uh, Ray Lapone, Gerald Skagen, but then also most relevant for today, the trial team in the Tyree Nichols case, including Paul Hagerman, and Tanisha Johnson. Another member of the trial team, Melanie Headley, is unavailable. We're here today because of a tragedy that wounds one family deeply, but also hurts us all, the death of Tyree Nichols. We understand and acknowledge the grief that the friends and family of Tyree Nichols are experiencing right now, as well as the great concern throughout all of Memphis and Shelby County about this case. We met several times this week with the family of Tyree Nichols. They described an almost perfect son, a cheerful and happy person who enjoyed skateboarding and sunsets over Shelby Farms Park. We're grateful to the family of Tyree Nichols who expedited both the investigated both the investigated both the investigation and the consideration of charges in this case, as well as the understanding on the part of the family that premature release of the video could compromise both. We did, work, we did work quickly to expedite this investigation because of the extraordinary nature of the case. Compared to the average investigation and prosecution uh, decisions in a case like this, we worked swiftly but also fairly and most importantly in a way calculated to ensure that we have a strong case. I've heard from Ms. Williams, I've heard from Ms. Williams in this case and any other officer-involved fatality case, I immediately called in the TBI so that we could have an independent investigation. I also assigned to the newly created Justice Review Unit within my office, which works independently and separately, both from law enforcement and the rest of my staff, to make a truly objective recommendation charge whether criminal charges were appropriate. I want to thank the TBI, the Justice Review Unit, and the trial team for working swiftly but thoroughly under very difficult conditions. Earlier today, the grand jury returned indictments against five former Memphis Police Department officers regarding the death of Tyree Nichols. These are the same five officers who were previously or recently terminated by the Memphis Police Department. They are currently in custody. They are To Darius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin III, Desmond Mills Jr., and, and Justin Smith. The grand jury returned indictments against all five with the same charges. And we had previously met with the family of Tyree Nichols to go over what these charges were going to be. And that meeting with the family, I think, went rather well. 
Here are the charges. Second degree murder, aggravated assault, aggravated kidnapping resulting in bodily injury, aggravated kidnapping involving the possession of a weapon, official misconduct through unauthorized exercise of power, official misconduct through failure to act when there is a duty imposed by law, and official oppression. While each of the five individuals played a different role in the incident in question, the actions of all of them resulted in the death of Tyree Nichols, and they are all responsible. It's important to note, as Ms. Williams said, that this is still an ongoing investigation, and therefore there are limits on what we can say about this case. We ask for everyone's continued patience as we continue to vigorously seek justice in this case. We also know that the public is very concerned about whether they can see the video about this incident and the timing of the release of this, uh, the video of, these, of this incident. I have been in regular contact with the city of Memphis, the custodian of that record, and I can tell you that the city will be releasing the video sometime after 6 p.m. Friday, tomorrow. And that the city of Memphis should be making a statement somewhat later on this afternoon regarding the timing of that release. Let me close by saying both to the family of Tyree Nichols and to the broader community here in Memphis and Shelby County, we all want the same thing. We want justice for Tyree Nichols. It's my hope that if there is any silver lining to be drawn from this very dark cloud, it's that perhaps this incident can open a broader conversation about the need for police reform. The world is watching us and we need to show the world what lessons we can learn from this tragedy. I'm hopeful that we can show them who I know us to be, a community working towards positive change here in Memphis and Shelby County. With that, let me ask Director Rausch to step forward. Thank you, D.A. Mulroy. Good afternoon, I'm David Rausch, Director of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. First and foremost and most importantly, on behalf of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, I want to extend my deepest condolences to the family and friends of Tyree Nichols. My prayer is that God will wrap his comforting arms around you and keep you during this very difficult time. We can't imagine, let me truth and, and, and realizing we should not be here, be here, be here, be here. Sim simply, simply, simply put, simply put, I've been policing for more than 30 years. I've devoted my life to this profession, and I'm grieved. Frankly, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm sickened by what I saw. And what we've learned through our extensive and thorough investigation. I've seen the video, and as D.A. Morley stated, you will too. In a word, it's absolutely appalling. Let me be clear. What happened here does not at all reflect proper policing. This was, this was wrong. This was criminal. The depth and breadth of the charges announced today speaks to the deliberate and thorough investigation that this case has received. And our work is not finished. We continue to pursue every lead. Justice demands it. And our agency exists so that guilt shall not escape, nor innocence suffer. To that end, I want to publicly thank our agents, our forensic scientists, our support staff, and our entire team around this state. They work diligently to expedite this case. We've worked as hard as we could and as quickly as we could to provide a thorough, independent, uninvestigated Roy and his team, Roy and his team, Roy and his team, Roy and his team to make the most informed decision 
they could regarding these charges. I also want to thank the Memphis Police Department and the city leaders for their cooperation in this case, which I want to stress is ongoing at this time. Thank you. I'll we'll take a few questions. And then and Whitland, let's make sure that one at a time. One and then yes. two. Okay. okay. Nothing we do today or did today precludes the addition of any further charges regarding any of the people that you mentioned. Um, we're still actively reviewing everything. Okay. Yes. Sir. Thank you, uh, Shimon Brokovich from CNN. We have not heard from the police chief uh, generally given a description of what occurred uh, in the initial stop, any kind of a timeline of what exactly occurred on that day. So I'm hoping perhaps Director you or the director there can explain to us much as possible a timeline of the events. He was stopped, was this a legal stop? Why was he stopped? And then sort of continue to explain perhaps what happened in, in the moment after that, as much as possible. Right, I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, and I suspect that all of your answers along those lines will, you know, you have a chance to view the video, chance to view the video for yourself. Um, I know that uh, it's already, a lot of this has already been uh, publicly released, but it, there was an initial traffic stop. We won't comment right now on the presence or absence of legality of the stop, but there was a traffic stop. And there was an initial altercation uh, involving several officers and Mr. Nichols. Um, pepper spray was deployed. The, uh, the uh, suspect, uh, not the suspect, Mr. Nichols, uh, fled on foot. <clears throat> there was another altercation uh, at a nearby location at which the, the, the serious injuries uh, were experienced by Mr. Nichols. After some period of time of um, waiting around afterwards, he was taken away by an ambulance. Beyond that, I don't really think I, we should go into any further so, details. So there was a delay in a call, the police delayed calling an ambulance for? The, there, was a, there was an elapsed period of time, but I believe that if you watch the video, you'll be able to make that judgment for yourself. Uh, Eric, do you want to? I'm, trying to? I'm trying to give everyone a chance. Yeah, 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 but is there a reason the police chief At least President there? CBS News. Mm -hmm. Is it known if Tyree Nichols had previously known these former officers? We have, we have no information to uh, disclose about that at this time. I don't know why uh, Chief Davis isn't here. Okay. Anything else? Well, the actual release will be up to the city of Memphis. My, my understanding is that it'll be a combination of pole cam video, sky cop video, and body cam video. We'll take just one more question. One more question. And there will be a review of specialized units within the Memphis Police Department. Two questions. First, were these officers member of the organized crime unit? And second, will your office be involved in that investigation? Well, so I've read in the newspaper that Chief Davis has announced a review of those uh, specialized units. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I commend Chief Davis for doing that. I think Chief Davis is uh, committed to, you know, uh, trying to do whatever uh, she can to learn lessons from this incident. I don't uh, contemplate that our office would be involved in that uh, review. Um, I think that's Were they members of the organized crime unit? Scorpion. So I think it's already been reported publicly uh, that was that Scorpion unit was involved. Thank you. Is that, is that it? That's it. Okay. I'm being told that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please tell us the alleged or aggravated kidnapping charges? To explain them? Yes, sir. All right. I, I don't mind doing that. I mean, <laughs> explaining the laws, I don't think uh, at all. Say it again. Can you explain the Yeah, 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 yeah. So, all right. So, um, Kidnapping is any uh, unlawful confinement uh, of another, uh, which substantially restrains someone's liberty. At a certain point in the sequence of events, this legal, it was a legal, it was a legal detention to begin with. It certainly became illegal at a certain point, and it was an unlawful detention. The aggravated nature of the charge is because if that kidnapping resulted in bodily injury, that's one grounds for saying that it is aggravated kidnapping. If the persons involved in that unlawful restraint of liberty possessed weapons, 
That is another ground for saying that the kidnapping was uh, aggravated. Do you want me to explain the other charges yeah. as well? Or? Okay. All right, um, so uh, official misconduct is when any public official acting uh, part of their official duties um, intentionally or uh, knowingly acts in a way, uh, exercises authority that is unauthorized by law. Right? So that's an affirmative statement, an affirmative act of official misconduct. At the same time, law enforcement officials who are on duty are also under an affirmative duty to prevent official misconduct. Um, and to uh, accurately uh, report information to any medical uh, facil uh, uh, personnel that show up. And through inaction, when there is a duty imposed by law, that could also be a separate ground for charging official misconduct. Um, official oppression is a related statute. Uh, it's not exactly the same. There is some overlap, but it's not perfect overlap. But it is uh, basically some sort of